serious family court lay was, what's the most petty behavior you've seen from parents? When I was in law school I worked on a case involving the parents of a victim of Sandy Hook. They were divorced prior to losing their child, but were still fighting over child support several years later. They were fighting over who got to keep the victim's compensation fund proceeds for the death of their 6 year old. They were insanely rich. So it wasn't about the money, it was about getting a win over their former spouse. It wasn't so much petty that they were fighting over it, but the way they were fighting over it. Using the death of their baby to score points against that baby's other parent and the other children were stuck in the middle of this shoot show. Incredibly petty but much more depressing than anything else. Worst case I've ever worked on. I'm just an intern. But I once was sifting through discovery that our client provided as he was trying to win custody over his son. One of these pieces of discovery was a detailed account of the mother's timeliness. Basically, if the mother was late to pick up her son, they would time it and document it. Which would make sense if it was significant. But I'm not exaggerating. Over a 6 month period, she was late for a total of 33 minutes. Seeing as they met to exchange the child 3 times slash week. It means she was late by about 1 or 2 minutes once a week. It was the most insignificant piece of data that I have ever seen in my entire life. But the client was adamant that we use it in court to prove that the mother was irresponsible. Family law legal assistant here. A client of ours included a chunk of pork in the freezer in her list of assets that she insisted she get back. The lawyer on the other side came back with respectfully, I'm not going to argue over second hand meat in a freezer. My GF is a family lawyer. She had a pair from Eastern Europe were in Ontario who wanted a divorce. Long fight over what the husband's assets were. He claimed to be living on less than $12,000 cash slash year. Wife hired a private detective, eventually found that he was hiding another home. Won a big settlement. My GF is really happy note, she doesn't get a penny of the settlement or bonus or extra pay, she just liked seeing the liar court. But, the wife still licensed happy, claims the husband is hiding even more money, keeps badgering him with more legal stuff, even though my GF is telling her you won, let it be. Then, husband hires a pie, finds out the wife is joint owner of another house with her new boyfriend. Settlement invalidated. My GF immediately got off the record and refused to help the woman anymore. Worked in an attorney's office for a little bit. Knew about a divorce case one of the attorneys was involved in where the child had been diagnosed with a terminal disease with maybe a few years left. And the parents tried to fight over what the child's wish should be for one of those make a wish a type of foundations. I do know the judge chewed both parents a new one when this issue came up, but ultimately could not make a call on how the wish would be granted. I believe the child ending up refusing the wish on account of the argument it caused between the parents. Just hearing about the details of this case freaked me up for a while. Edit. Formatting. Not really petty but more psychotic. My dad received full custody and won everything in the divorce because my mom was diagnosed with a multitude of mental problems that she refused to take medication for and she was an abusive alcoholic who also did meth for funses. Anyways, after all that was said and done, she decided she'd show us. When we were gone she'd break into the house and steal random shoot like Tupperware lids. All of the Tupperware lids. I shoot you not. We came home from school and all of the forks were gone. So we went to Walmart and bought forks. Came home with forks and all of the spoons were gone. We found out she'd been getting in through my bedroom window. So we put a lock on the window and put up security cameras. Didn't work out because 3 days later, while we were gone we got her on video stealing. Yes actually stealing. The window and running down the road. Before you ask, yes we have a restraining order. Yes, we turned the tapes over to the cops. No, you can't have a crazy person put into a mental hospital against their will, unless they are a physical threat to themselves or others. Yes, she still randomly steals stuff from my dad's house. It's more of an amusement now though. You always decorate the tops of your cabinets with stuff, and forget about it. So we play this game called what used to be there. Client once called me with an emergency. The emergency was that his soon to be ex-wife fed the kid chef Boyardee for dinner. I went to law school for this. As an intern, I saw a couple have long hateful emails about who was going to keep a unisex harmony hoodie. 
Almost all of their discussions centered on that one hoodie. When in the end the husband got to keep it, the wife cut holes into it which ruined it. It was pretty nice tbh. A mother actively coaching her two kids to say that dad was physically and sexually abusive to them. She would have gotten away with it except for two things one. The court appointed psych managed to catch these lies out in the interview. To date longest report I have read at 280 pages and two. The oldest kid then 10 I think, got annoyed at the mother for some such reason, and recorded her on their cell phone, which was promptly played for dad. In the end dad got full day to day care and mother had supervised contact for 6 months, before she went to every second weekend. Edit, just want to make clear, that this is probably the worst case I have se in my experience both males and females can be as nasty as each other making allegations. Sadly the worst losers in this are always the children reddit too. Check some old notes on it. Mother had supervised contact for 13 months not 6. Still not enough emo, but better than 6. This happened in January. Guy was straight out of jail 2 years, and of course at that point, his marriage was rocky as hell. When his wife dropped his kids off to visit he lived with his parents for parole purposes the son said his uncle hit him. The father then filed a PFA against the wife and uncle. It was granted. Then he files for sole custody. It was granted. The kids were in his custody for about 2 months before the custody hearing. Of course, my boss threw me the file, and I had to handle the mediation and last minute prep. At mediation, the father and wife sit angry eyed. Literally, each cross armed and furious. The other lawyer. And I discuss the facts and what arrangement each client wants briefly in another room. We come out, and our clients are gone. Magically, and praise the lord. In the course of 10 minutes of me, and the lawyer talking, the father and mother made up, made out in the corner of the hallway and returned. The case was dropped. May I mention, this was pro bono? PA jurisdiction 2. Repeatedly taking the kids to CPS, and trying to get them to accuse a teenager of grape. Every medical record makes it clear, that the mother was the only one doing any talking. What's worse, she was a social worker trained to interview child sex victims professionally. So many I don't know which to choose. A father once called me, because his ex-wife was planning to take their daughter to Disney World. He said he was concerned she might decide to stay there, and he wouldn't know how to contact his daughter. Right, it's not because your kid might have fun with mom, it's because of the epidemic of people who just don't come back from Disney. Sounds legit. A mother, who had for good cause lost custody of her children for the foreseeable future, would not let them retrieve their clothes and stuff from her house because, she claimed, she would never get it back. A dad, who made 90% of the parents combined income, tried to get the court, to force mom to pay her 10% share of their teenage son's car insurance costs, because reasons. I did the math, her share came out to less than dollar sign. 25 per day. This after she had to go to court to get him to pay his share of the kid's educational expenses. I've lost track of how many times I've seen a parent tell the judge they'd rather pay the cost of a babysitter than let the child spend more time with the other parent who was willing, able, and eager to watch the kid. Of course they always want the other parent to pay their share of the babysitter cost too. Of course. Another popular one, divorce seems to be the leading cause of very successful businesses suddenly and mysteriously tanking. Business is great. What's that? My ex might be entitled to a portion of my business? Oh, uh, this business ain't doing so good no more. The economy, you know. Tough times. Ed. My first job out of law school was as a trial court staff attorney. This is basically a judicial law clerk, so we did a lot of research and advisory memos for judges. I didn't cover a family law docket, but my office mate did. She got an emergency motion in a family law case one time. For the non-lawyers, these are filed when something is extremely time sensitive, and critically like a matter of life and death important. If the judge deems it a true emergency, your matter will be heard on an expedited basis. Feel fast track you in for a hearing, usually in a matter of days, rather than the usual weeks slash months it normally takes to get a hearing date. 
Anyhow, this particular emergency motion was to compel the ex-spouse to send their child to Happy Faces Daycare, because if the child couldn't go to Happy Faces Daycare, it was going to be irreparably damaged from the lack of social exposure, etc. Emergency. Happy Faces Daycare. FML. Needless to say, this was not an emergency. I don't know how the motion was ultimately ruled on, other than that it wasn't an emergency. Probably the case where a woman sexually assaulted her toddler daughter digital penetration in the bathroom of a supervised visitation center. I guess her plan was that the child would see dad and start complaining about the pain. Not very smart though, as I said, it was all supervised. Yes, she lost custody. That, or fighting over a fuzzy blue couch. Canadian family lawyer here. Many instances of pettiness. Generally, good family lawyers will call their client on their bullshit. We don't want to be the lawyer standing in front of a judge over really petty things. Reputation is important. Client, my son is very mature for his age. I believe access to his mother should be per his discretion me. Your two year old son, that said, I've had people call my office yelling that my client won't allow them to pick up the infant child at 10 p.m. Only 4 hours late for a visit, one guy fired two previous lawyers and retained me to negotiate adding three meaningless words to a settlement, we're talking months of intense negotiations between counsel, one parent refused to allow another parent to take kids on vacation because they wanted to take the child to Disney first, despite, you know, not having the funds to do so. The most petty are the parents who phone cast child protection services or the police for every minor disagreement. Your two year old cries when leaving your home? Call child protection services. As an intern in law school I saw a case where the father was likely going to get an unfavorable custody and support arrangement, so he claimed the mother was unfit. His basis? She's into kinky six and has a new boyfriend. He insisted on telling the court specifically what she likes in bed, even though he admitted that the children never saw or were subjected to any of these sexual acts. He did it just to embarrass the mother. I've seen some beach ass pettiness, but the best story I have is actually from my guardian ad litem professor. When she was practicing, she had a client whose ex-wife was super duper anal about getting all of the children's clothes back from his house when she got the kids back from him. Like, if one sock was left behind all hell would break loose. So this guy's solution was to make the children strip naked in the foyer and put on clothes specifically worn at his place when it was his turn to have them. Then when they went back to mom's, they had to strip naked again and change back into the clothes she sent them therein. In law school I did some intern work for a family law clinic. Most of my clients were pretty reasonable, but when waiting for my cases to be heard in the hearing room, I saw some really petty and terrible shoot from other parties. But one case stood out as the worst. One guy who got custody of the family dog in the divorce said that if he didn't get more visitation with the children he would have the dog euthanized. His excuse was that without the kids there, the dog wouldn't get the attention it needed and was better off dead. The ex-wife made an impassioned plea before the judge, showing pictures of the kids playing with the dog and video testimony from the kids expressing their love for it. It was 100% clear they would be devastated if the dog was put down. While the judge was very sympathetic and tried asking the ex-husband to be reasonable, in the end her hands were tied, since the dog was the ex-husband's property per the divorce agreement, and he was free to do whatever he wanted, provided it comported with state anti-cruelty laws. In the end she relented to give him custody rights basically every weekend of the month, in order to save the kid's dog. To the judge's credit, she gave the ex-husband a verbal haranguing like I've never seen in all my years of practicing law since. She warned him that she would be watching this case very closely and would not hesitate referring it to a criminal prosecutor if he slips up in any way either towards the treatment of the dog or the kids. And that if anything happens to that dog, she would fast track a hearing to revisit his visitation rights, and strongly implied the new visitation schedule would be vastly against his favor, should that come to pass. On that day I realized I never wanted to be a family lawyer. Edit, TL, doctor, father threatens to kill family dog, if he doesn't get weekend custody of the kids and wins custody in court. I'm not a lawyer, I just worked for one. 
One case involved a family, three kids aged 2 to 10. The father was being accused, rather suddenly, of sexually abusing his children. The mother brought suit against him for this. I got to read a psychologist evaluation of the whole thing. It was long, and I only half remember it, so I'll try to keep it short. The father was surprised, to say the least, and the mother was rather hostile. The children did mention stories of abuse, and indicated to CPS that they were being abused in one-on-one -on -one sessions. The mother was described as having many detailed stories of the abuse, the how, the why, the wh the maternal grandmother was also apparently helping her with these. Some of her descriptions were painful, going as far as to detail how the father abused his naked two-year-old daughter while changing her diaper. The mother apparently also had a history of sexual abuse as a child, and was working night shifts that stressed her out a lot recently, but didn't want to change this. The father's evaluation was shorter, he appeared like a deer in headlights and didn't understand his wife's sudden shift in tone. He only came to terms with the full consequences much later in the proceedings. The children themselves were evaluated during visits with their respective parents, noting that the mother was extremely controlling in the presence of the supervisor, and would reprimand in ways that were ineffective. The father's time with the children was much warmer, more natural, he was able to redirect the children, to behave without any punishment or reprimands. With one on one time with the children they indicated signs of abuse, though it's interesting how they have to do things with very young children the psychologist did not get the impression that these indications were genuine and that they were coached. The psychologist's conclusion gave the impression that the mother and maternal grandmother were coaching the children into indicating their father was abusive. The conclusion was mostly that the children should immediately be placed in custody with their father. The mother would get visitation rights, but not custody. The CPS report indicating abuse was a false positive due to the use of leading questions and other techniques which were not accurate. This report more or less cemented the father's position as sole caretaker, as it became clear the mother had concocted his story. I don't remember the exact motives or reasons, just that it was generally unpleasant, and taught me a lot about how far parents would go. TL. Doctor. Mother makes up sexual abuse stories, to keep kids from father. Worked in a law firm dealing in family matters. Couple hammers out a separation agreement over months of meetings, mediation, letters, and drafts back and forth. Ended up having to take it to court, because they couldn't agree on who would get the air miles. The freaking air miles. I'm an assistant to a family attorney and Jesus Christ, people are petty assholes. Both men and women equally, by the way. I would say the most frequent is not allowing the other parent to take the kids to Disneyland or to visit their grandparents out of state. Literally going to court to prevent them from doing that. It happens so much. They don't care about whether or not the child has fun. They just want to sabotage the other parent for moving on. Some people just can't let go of their exes, even if they are the ones that left. Kids are just tools for revenge. The revenge they want is for their offspring to resent the other parent as much as they do. I realize that family law is such a huge industry because there are so many petty asshole and all-out psychos that exist. The funner thing is that these people are your friends and co-workers. You would just never know how they are with their families. Not everyone is as chill as they seem. Client's spouse of decades gets a terminal cancer diagnosis about halfway into a fairly routine medium slash high asset divorce. My client is such a viciously horrible person, saying they were glad that the spouse was dying, that the opposing party's literal dying wishes to be divorced and never see a spouse of 30 plus years again. I have been in family law for over a decade and the most petty thing I have ever seen happened was that the wife from an affluent divorcing family had several trees planted on one side of a fence on the property and the husband wanted them planted on the other side of the exact same fence, about 5 feet from where the wife had them planted. He insisted that we file contempt against the wife for said tree plantings. They spent close to dollar sign 50k in legal fees arguing over the stupid trees. It was incredulous. I have stories upon stories of people's pettiness, but this one will always stand out for me. Another really petty one was a dad buying a money order for child support every month, but not actually giving them to the mom. He gave us copies of all of the money orders he bought as evidence of the support he paid, but she claimed she had never received them. Well that seemed stupid, but no he had actually just kept them and then 
like an idiot, gave the original month's old money order to the mom to pay for the outstanding child support balance. He was definitely found in contempt. People can be really ridiculous. I practice law, not usually family law, but I have a case of my own right now. My grade school aged son took an entrance exam for a gifted student program. He has been offered a spot in the program, but it will require switching to a different school within the district next year if he joins. The program is well regarded in town. One person whose kids went through it described it to me as a quality private school education for free. I have to go to court in a few weeks to argue over whether our son should join the program. His mother, who signed him up for the test and called it the most important day of his life, has now decided he shouldn't join it. I don't know why. She's made some half-hearted arguments that he couldn't handle it and that she'd have to do too much driving. But I suspect it's just because I'm in favor of it. This is getting me really down. It's a great opportunity for our son and she just doesn't want to agree. The ex-husband didn't want to pay what he owed his ex-wife. He thought he could frick her over by dragging on the process with appeals. He was not only hurting her, but also his children she desperately needed the money, and he knew that. Him dragging the process caused her to lose her job and have to move back with her parents. But once he paid she not only moved out, but bought a house. No not just like applied for a loan and got a house straight out paid cash for a full house. In the end he not only had to pay the full amount of what he owed, but child support, his lawyer fees and her lawyer fees, 